Boy, I hope you are ready to do some more pivoting because we're going to pivot like nobody's pivoted before. Ooh, yeah. In the last video, I talked about pivoting data where you have each group in separate columns. And we pivoted it so that all the scores are contained in one column, and then we had a new column like treatment and control group. And that was so much fun, we just couldn't get enough, so now we're just going to do more. But now, what happens when you have additional columns that do not need pivoting? What kind of complications arise? Well, let's go ahead and look at an example. So let's jump into my R, shall we? Do -do -do -do. Ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived safely in R. You may unbuckle your belts at this time and turn your electronic devices off of airplane mode. Woo. We will hold hands down the data analysis road. So we're gonna start by reading in depression underscore wide. And ooh, that was fun, that was easy. We're rolling. And then head depression underscore wide, just so I could see all the data at once. And one question you might want to ask yourself is which variable is time varying? And if we look at this data set, we see depression at time one, depression at time two, depression at time three, depression at time four. So very clearly depression is time varying. And we also have stress measured at four time points. So stress is time varying. As an example of a variable that is not time varying, we have parental depression. Their parents' depression was measured at the beginning of the study and then never measured again, along with SES, life events, and of course their ID doesn't change. So we have time varying and non-time varying variables. And what we're gonna do to start um, is we're going to just worry about depression and then we'll worry about stress. Um, aside from that, as long as you understand the difference between time varying and non-time varying, uh, having additional variables creates no new complex complexity whatsoever. We still have the same data arguments, we still have data, which in this case is going to be depression underscore wide. We still have calls, which we could say depression underscore one colon depression underscore four. Or we could use starts with, as we used in the dplyr video. Uh, names 2 is the same. So on what variables depression and stress spread out? Well, it's spread out over time. Time 1, time 2, time 3, and time 4. And so we're probably going to call our names 2, or that new variable, we're going to call it time. And then we've got values underscore 2. And again, whatever we specify becomes the name of the variable that is currently spread out. So in this case, we're going to do, well, I say depression and stress here, but we're going to start with just depression. So now that we have an idea of what our arguments are going to look like, let's give it a go. So I'm going to start with depression underscore long is equal to, so I'm creating a new object because I want to keep this data set, depression wide. And then we're going to do pivot longer. Now in the last video, I made it explicit, depression underscore wide, but because we are operating after the pipe, we don't need that anymore. In fact, it would probably screw things up if we put it in there. So yeah, pivot longer. Our calls are going to be starts with depression. And what that's going to do is it's going to find any column that has the word depression in it. and return that there. And then names two, again, it is spread out over time. So I'm gonna create a new column called time. And again, why is that in quotes? Because time as a variable does not exist net yet. We are telling R its name is going to be equal to time. And then values two is gonna give get depression, which again is telling R that we are going to name it depression. Now, if I were to just run that part, we'd be in good shape, look at that. We took our depression variable. Now you can't see them right now because it only shows, uh, well, it cut off the last variable. Let me make this a little wider and maybe it will show us. There we go. So now depression was spread out over four columns. Now it's in one single column and it used to be that each individual only had one row, but now each individual has four rows accounting for the four times they were measured. So that's great. But now, like I said, we're just going to start by worrying about depression and having these stress scores in there are going to mess things up later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another pipe 
and then say select and then minus to get rid of stress one through stress four. And if I do all of that together, and then I go head depression underscore long, I get a nice, clean, tidy data set where the time variable is in a single column and then the depression scores are in a single column. Notice also what it did with time is it took what used to be the column names, depression one, depression two, depression three, depression four, and put those as observations in rows instead. Um, but unfortunately, that's a little messy. Maybe you don't care about that. If you don't care about it, usually it doesn't matter for analysis, but maybe we need it to be a number, or maybe I just visually don't like having depression underscore one written out, and I want it to instead say one, two, three, and four. So can we do something about that? Why, yes, yes, we can do something about that. And what we're going to do is we're gonna use uh, the mutate function along with um, a function called G sub. So I'm gonna start by showing you the results of this just so you know what things are gonna happen. Notice we have gotten rid of depression underscore and now we just have one, two, three, and four. Um, and so I'm gonna explain in just a minute what G sub is doing, but notice what I have here is I have depression underscore long. I'm making an assignment. I'm saying depression long is equal to all this. And that's cool. But now here I'm saying depression long is equal to, so I'm creating a new object that is the same name as the old object. That can really screw you up. And so what I would recommend doing is just taking this pipe, cutting it, um, and then putting it at the end of here. So now you're not creating uh, and replacing existing objects. Instead, you just have one depression long. And then now if I run all that together, it will do everything, including cleaning up the name of time. So that looks very nice now. Now, back to the tangent that I promised I would go on. So you're probably wondering, hey, quant psych man, you went all fast and stuff. I don't know what you did. As promised, let's go on this small tangent. I did this mutate time equals G sub, etc. time. What is G sub? Well, G sub is short for substitute. I actually don't even know what the G refers to, but uh, G substitute. So what you're doing is you're substitu substituting part of a character for something else. So for example, Let's say um, you have a document with a lot of text and you want to replace all instances of hell with heck. Just as an example. We're kid friendly on this show. So G sub takes three arguments. The first argument is the string it is looking for. So in this case, it's hell. Second argument is the replacement. In this case, it is heck. And then the third argument what object you are using for that replacement. And so I created an object in here, probably what I ought to do to make it a little more explicit. Here's an object is equal to hello, my friend. And so now if I go G sub, here's an object and put that as my third argument, what it's going to do is G sub is going to find all instances of hell and replace it with heck in whatever object I have. And so if I run this line of code, I get hecko my friend, because hello has the word hell in it. Um, and that works not only for um, a single value, but you could also do it for a vector. So maybe we have hello my friend and hell no. <gasps> and for gosh sake, watch your language. And hell if I care. My apologies for the language. And so now if I were to do that, I would see hecko my friend, heck no, and heck if I care. So now going back to here, we are saying mutate, which you may remember, I hope you remember, means that we are going to create a new column. And we are saying we're going to create a new column called time, which is equal to the old time, except we are replacing every instance of depression underscore with nothing. That's what the open quote, close quote means. It means nothing. And so that's how we end up getting um, a variable that looks like that. 
So, end of tangent. All right, so we just uh, created a new data set that looks like this, that has our depression scores. We are moving along. Now we need to address the stress variable. So we've done that with depression. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but for the stress variable. So I'm gonna start with my original data set, which is my wide data set. Oops, I have to go head depression underscore wide. So I'm starting with this data set. Um, and, but this time I'm going to pivot longer. Let me just tab that so we know that it's all from the same function. So we're gonna find all variables that start with stress, which in this case is gonna be stress one, stress two, stress three, and stress four. And then the names two, again, what are they varying over? So stress is varying over time. So I'm gonna call that variable time. And then the values two. Oh, so what variable is being spread out here? It's stress. So I'm gonna name it stress. And so if I just did that much right there, we would see a data set like this where we've got time. Well, I gotta make that a little wider again. So if I just run that line of code, we get a new stress variable. And again, just like we did when we did depression, each person now has four rows where they used to have one. Each row contains a different instance of stress. And as before, we have what used to be column names now as a time variable with stress underscore one, two, three, and four. And uh, just like we did before, to clean things up, we're gonna get rid of these old depression values. Um, and also, and so I'll just show you this one line at a time just so you can see what each line is doing. And so that gets rid of the depression values. And then the final thing that we're gonna do is we're going to mutate the time variable to get rid of the stress underscore variable. And so when we do all of that together, we now have a new data set. So at this point, we have a stress data set and we have a depression data set. Both those data sets, data sets, <laughs> data sets, both those data sets have been tidied. So now we want to combine all that information together. And there are two ways that we can combine them. The easiest one that doesn't require you to really learn anything new is just by creating a new column using the mutate function. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna create a new data set called depression underscore stress to indicate that it has both of them. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the depression underscore long data set. You could take the stress data set if you wanted, but I'm gonna take that data set that is now in long format and then I'm going to mutate or create a new column that is equal to stress, that I'm calling stress, and that is equal to stress underscore long dollar sign stress. So I'm taking a column from a different data set and then appending it to my other data set. And if I run that much, we now have a data set that has both depression and stress in there. Wow. And it looks like I didn't need that part. Um, I guess in my uh, preparing for this, I forgot I'd already done that. So that's all we need to do, which is really cool. So that's one way of doing it, is just by creating a new column that um, pulls something from the other data set and attaches it to the data set that we're looking at. Another way to do it is by doing what's called a merge. So merging basically means that you have two data sets and you want to merge them or combine them together. There's lots of different ways to do that. And one way that we're gonna talk about is full join and what that will do. Uh, well, it takes uh, a couple arguments. The first argument is data set A. The second argument is data set B. So we're basically saying, all right, combine the stress underscore long and the depression underscore long data set. And then the by argument, what this does is it tells um, R which columns are the same across both data sets. And so what R will do in the background is it will identify rows, whatever you specify in the by area, it will identify uh, rows that have identical values on those and then just append whatever else is there. Um, often, in this case, it actually wouldn't be necessary to specify this, but I'm gonna specify it just to show you what it's doing. So if I were to do that, um, and then look at head of that. Notice we have something that looks identical to what we had before, um, but we're using merging now. 
Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna modify our buy argument just to show you a little more clearly what the buy is doing. But in this instance, I'm going to forget about time. So time used to be there, but I'm now not putting it there. So what I'm telling R is I'm saying any occasion where person ID, life events, parental depression, and SES are identical, um, put those on the same, put the depression and the stress scores on the same row. Where they are not identical, put them in separate rows. Um, but because I forgot to put time in there, what do we see? Now what do we have? We have now created two new time variables, but because we didn't put in the by time. And so it's assuming that the time measure on the stress variable is a different variable than the time measure on the depression variable. And so it is now creating extra columns to account for that fact. So uh, that's the only part that you really need to be careful of is in the by. Make sure that if you do specify by, which is probably good practice to specify it by, that you are specifying exactly which variables should be identical across columns. And those variables that are not specified there show up as separate columns. So that there was right fun, I tell you, right fun indeed. That was fun! <laughs> it ought to be illegal to have that much fun in R, but it ain't. So with that, let me review our learning objectives. Number one, what complications do non-pivoted variables add? Or I might say non-time varying variables. And the only complication that they add is none. There is no complication. The arguments still look the same, but we now have to be more careful about remembering which columns are time varying and make sure that those are put in the calls argument. Number two, know what time variables are. And again, time varying variables are variables that vary across time and they are showing up as different columns and those are the ones that you need to pivot on. Number three, uh, know how to use starts with for pivoting. That actually we started talking about in the last video, but I forgot to put it as a learn objective. So I'm putting it here. Uh, just know how to use starts with and contains and ends with when you're pivoting. Number four, understand how to use G sub. Again, G sub means G substitute. I don't remember what G means. And it takes three arguments. The first argument is the pattern you are looking for in a string. The second ar argument is what you want to replace that pattern with. And then the third argument is the object that you are applying that substitution to. Uh, number five, two ways to combine data sets. Well, in both cases, we're going to create a separate data set for each of the time varying variables. And then to combine them, one way is with one of those data sets that we create, we add a new column using mutate that just pulls from the other data set. And the other one is by using a merge statement. And when you're using merge statements, be sure to be careful about using the by statement. Remember the by specifies which variables are the same across the data sets. So that's our learning objectives. Now let me give you something to practice. So on in the description, there is a link to a data set called gaming.csv. It is fictitious data about 30 individuals measured at three time points and it is like a video gaming convention, basically. And they are measured on their reaction time and their sleep and their scores. Some of these are time varying, some of these are not. Um, make sure that when you look at this data set, you identify the time varying variables. And then what I want you to do is to create a tidy data set that contains all the time varying variables in a single column. And once again, like I said in the last video, I cannot put the answer to the practice in the description because R will not allow greater than or less than signs. So instead, I will link to a document that has the answers for you. So I think we're done today. I hope you've had fun. I've had a blast. See you next time. Peace out.